Let's have my next guest down. I think we should. But first, let's see her in action in the fantastic Doctor Who. Online and watch. Oh, hold on! Oh, hold on! You look lovely on their shirts. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, I loved you in Doctor Who. Thank you. Presumably, were you, when you grew up, was Doctor Who even on TV? Did you grow up knowing about it? And... I remember it being on and around, but I, we never sat down as a family to watch it. Okay, so you weren't really a fan when you were young? Not really. Okay. And then I didn't go back and watch any of the older ones. And so when they came to you and said that we're doing, we're thinking of bringing it back, were you excited by it or did you think it might not necessarily be something you wanted to do? Um, I, as soon as I read the script, I kind of thought I definitely want to be part of this right. production because it's so good on the, pay on the page, you know. Well, that's kind of what made it work, wasn't it? It was yeah, the quality of the Russell. scripts. I mean, the acting yeah. was great as well, but initially, obviously, you need those scripts yeah. to be there. Uh, and, and how was it working with the different doctors then? I mean, when Christopher Eccleston uh, regenerated, because yeah. the two of you together were so good. Right. And I remember my little girl, who's nine, who loves you in the show and uh, loves the whole program, was so sad, was so upset. Oh, really? And she thought, doctor's gone. And, yeah. and I said, don't worry, darling, there'll be another doctor. Yeah. And she went, but he won't be my doctor. Oh. Okay. You must have felt a bit like that, I would have thought. Well, I just... I don't know. <laughs> it was it was tough. It was kind of it was really sad when the news came about, obviously. Um, and then and then David came on and suddenly everything was all right again. And you forgot all about the first one. Fickle. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know that's the way it has what to work. That? But ha <laughs> See ya. Oh, that's nice to know. Well, <laughs> you, you, you have to move on. You're right. Why bother thinking about former yeah. things like that? You've got to move on with the new doctor. You need to. Um, now, now, David, you obviously get on very well with. Yeah. I believe really, you have a nickname really for well. him on the set. Ten inch. David Ten inch. Yeah. <laughs> what would this be referring to? <laughs> His ten inches. <laughs> no, it's just a joke. I'm, well, I, I oh, don't. That's I have worse. no idea. You don't, you don't say that his nickname is ten inches and then say, "Oh, it's just a joke." It was a gag. It okay. was a gag, and and now we like to let everybody believe it's true, and it may be true. I have no idea. Maybe it's like a, a TARDIS. It's just big, big on, on the inside. The inside. You've heard that before. What's inside? <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> But it's so much fun going to work and being in Doctor Who. I'm yeah. sure there are times when you think, oh, this is it's just a job like any other job. And yeah. other times when it really It kind of so. never really feels like any other job, to be honest. And it's always changing the stories. You know, it's, it's a completely new story every episode. And there's new cast. So it's, it's not an average day at the office for, you know, in Doctor Who. And how long was it? Two years? Three years? It's, you, it's you two years, but it's, they, we shoot nine months of each year. Right. In Cardiff. And, and then you've, Newport, you've left and now. Rome. Yeah. But that oh, seems... Oh, it's really sad. But it seems weird as well, because I, I can understand why you want new challenges and do yeah. other stuff, but you, you, you were working with people you loved working with. Yeah. You were doing a show which was a huge success. Yeah. You were, you know, a huge part of that success. Yeah. You know, and then you walk away from that. I know, it seems insane. So why? Well, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to try something else. I'd done two years, and I knew that if I'd stayed there, it's so great and so comfy, and I may have become a bit complacent, and... Maybe I would have feared moving on a bit more, whereas now I'm kind of feeling a bit fearless. But we'll see how that goes. Jump, jump early rather than later. Um, but then you can go back, I guess, couldn't you? Well, yeah, well, that's the, the glory of sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. But now you've got, and it must be strange seeing other ladies, because there, look, she's taken over from you now. She's looking good. Yeah, and yeah, then and there's Freema. Now, Freema is the new lady yeah. who, who travels with the Doctor. Yeah. Okay, and how do you feel about that? Terrible. 
incredible. I'm incredibly jealous. I'm like the green-eyed monster at the moment, and I've got this subscription to um, Doctor Who magazine, and they send it to me every kind hold of... On, hold on, hold <laughs> on. And I'll be honest, that does sound a little bit pathetic. But Why? You know, because you're in Doctor Who. You yeah, don't need they... to buy the magazine. I love the magazine. And Is now it a that good I magazine? It's a great magazine. What do they say in the magazine? Well, it's loads of They show you how a TARDIS works and like yeah. how his screwdriver works. Yeah, stuff. it's all of that. <laughs> And, you know, bits of the script and yeah. people that were in, the, you know, the, the ones years back. Yeah. It's great. It's a good read. It's a, it's a good read. It's a great read. Yeah. Official. Um, so you get the magazine. So, <laughs> so now, I get the magazine and then I see so Freema. He's lovely and brilliant and all of those things. And I see her on the cover and I'm just like that. <laughs> just throw it across the room. It's terrible. It's I really need to watch it. You, it's you, getting way out of hand. Well, and I, you're going to have to make peace with that fact. At some point, yeah. But not yet. Not yet. I'm not ready to. Now, Billy Piper, ladies and gentlemen, is, uh, how old are you? 24, 25, 24. Billy? 24. All right, and you've written your autobiography. Yeah, I know. Okay. It sounds ridiculous, Well, it, it does sound ridiculous, but I thought it was out already, because I've seen it uh, serialised in one of the newspapers, but it's not out yet. It's no. out next week, isn't it? No, it's out. It's, it's, it is oh, it out, is out. I Just thought it was today. Out there. there you go. It's just come out today. I'm sorry. There's Billy's book, Growing Pains, out today, uh, and it's a kind of fascinating story. It, I hope so. But unlike most people, and you know, you get a lot of youngsters in, in, in show business and write autobiographies these days, you've actually led quite a remarkable life up to this point, so it kind yeah. of makes sense. Because when were you first in the public eye? When did you first... Um, when I, w I was just turning 14, I think. 14 yeah. years old? That's ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And this was when you, you were a pop star, of course. Yeah. All right. Now, so that's very young. Was this because you wanted it? You were very ambitious? Did your parents do you in this direction? No, I, I really wanted it. They weren't like festival parents, you know, they weren't kind of dragging you to everything. So they weren't pushy and trying to get you no. Okay. No, they were very chilled, but I was very determined. And how did that happen? You were a stage school kid, and yeah. then you got spotted, or you... Yeah, this, um, this lovely guy called Hugh Goldsmith came to my school, having seen me on the front of Music Week, um, promoting smash hits, right. doing all this, you know, blowing bubbles, And what, just things, thought you looked guns. cute, and you looked... Yeah, I, I don't really know, but he came to the school to find me. We spoke about music. He said, can you sing? I said yes, which was a lie. And then, um, and then, um... And that was it. We signed, did a demo, and that was it. It was very, it was quite easy. And when you walked away from that, was that because uh, things were going, the, the career wasn't working out, or was it just you were unhappy with the situation? Because once again, it seems quite remarkable that someone was having success, and even if every single wasn't a hit, you know, you still had, yeah. I would have thought, a career ahead of you there, and you, and you totally shifted. Yeah, I just felt like a bit of a charlatan, and, and I always wanted to act. And but I, it doesn't stop so many people. Oh, we sure, could name I 20 know. people now, almost all. You could say, and seriously, and I've said this to them, you know, they know it as well. Victoria Beckham knows she's not been gifted with a great voice, and yet she hammered away, you know, with different singers and different things, true. because she didn't want to let go of it. And she must have known, really, that yeah. it wasn't going to last for yeah. much longer. Well, I knew it wasn't going to last, and I felt very awkward about it, and I started to get quite embarrassed about it, and, and, and I just had to take some time off. And I'd been working solidly since I was, you And know, you were still a kid, really? Yeah. Uh, and it was that, that was when you met Chris Evans, wasn't it? And then I met Chris Evans. Okay. And Chris really swept you off your feet, didn't he? Yeah, it? really, yeah. In a big way. <laughs> now, what happened? You got married, right? Uh, in Las Vegas? Yeah. Okay. You'd been together for how long before you got married? Six months. Six months, okay. And you get to Las Vegas, you yeah. get married, and then you spend the next few years doing what exactly? Just kind of travelling. Kind of on holiday? Yeah. Okay. Now, how is that being... Was that like where you both said, okay, we're not going to go back to work because we don't need to, or did it just snowball? It, I don't know how it happened. Was it planned? It wasn't planned at all. One day we woke up and just said, let's go away. Then we ended up in Palm Springs. Then we ended up in Vegas. And then we just ended up kind of <laughs> just, you know, travelling around. It was so brilliant, well, though. Yeah, it sounds oh, cool. It great, was amazing. I, I get, when, if I'm on holiday, when, once I'm about four or five days away from home and my regular life, I get a bit itchy. Switchy. I get a bit like, oh, Restless. you know. And yet you guys, we, you were basically on holiday for like two years, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it it was just unbelievable. Sounds absurd. We went everywhere and we met the most <laughs> amazing people and real characters and hired cars and ate well and drank well. Did you buy it? Like you bought a house? In somewhere. LA. In LA. And how long did you live there for? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. About four months. So you bought a house, a big house? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was Lionel Richie's <laughs> old house. That's so a bit nice. Lionel Richie's house, when you press the bell, did it go, hello? No. <laughs> no, it didn't, but he did have... <laughs> 
But if I was on the wiki, that's what mine would say. He did have um, a basin for his, for his um, hair showers. You know, like one of those things you get at the, like at sh the, like at the beauty salon. Like did he little... have that weird statue the blind girl made of it? Was oh, like, God! Because that didn't even look that? like him, did it? I was like, we. I mean, I thought she was blind. We shouldn't be unkind. But it was not a great... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. uh, so you had a house just for four months. Well, yeah. Uh, and, and you kind of really, uh, you went from being essentially a pop star and someone obviously appearance was crucial yeah. uh, to, to someone who it appeared, and once again, I don't mean this wrong way, it looks like you weren't that bothered about how you or no, Chris looked. You I kind didn't. of both just, most of the days you looked like you hadn't showered for quite some time. Well, we hadn't. Yeah, <laughs> but, there, but you look very, Oh, God, that's awful. But you look that's very lovely there, I think, because you look very natural and you look very real and, and you look like you're having great fun. I look fun. like an emo. Yeah. Yeah. You look like a shit-faced Ewok. <laughs> an Ewok that's had far too many Bacardi breezers. <laughs> What's the longest period, in that period, do you think, what was the longest period you went without having either a bath or a shower? Maybe a week. A week. That's not so long, really. I was hoping for like a month. No, no, no. I go a week now, a easy, week. sometimes. Especially if you live in the country, for some reason, you just don't feel the need to shower. You mean like, just country people? <laughs> I'm sure there are exceptions to the rules. <laughs> Maybe one or two Maybe on a bike occasionally, two. but a lot of them, you know, they're like scarecrows. <laughs> um, in the book, uh, and I've seen this in the paper, and obviously the papers love digging out the juicy bits, right? Mm. And they talked about your, your eating problems mm. and trying to stay thin and eating tissue paper and some mm. of that, which sounds just horrible. It's just horrible. Is it as deeply unpleasant as we would imagine? Of course. How many pieces of tissue paper did you get down in any one sitting? Six sheets. Six sheets of paper. Did you put any sauce on it or anything? No, like no, no controversy. <laughs> but do you drink water to get it down? Or yeah. Something? That's horrible, isn't it's it? It's so, it's so awful. And how long did you do that it's for? It's insane. Um, I did it for about, it was only, it was about two years. Two but I wasn't eating years. tissue solidly for two years. I had other techniques. You'd have a it. banana occasionally. Occasionally, or a few nuts. But you'd have other eating things. We shouldn't talk about this in too much because I suppose some, sometimes, even though we're sitting there thinking this is awful, there are little girls yeah, who might uh, watch a show or something. You that's know, how you do it. I'll remember how yeah, to do that's that. What I, that's, what, how, that's what I used to do. So you had that period of your life. You came <laughs> back, you and Chris Party Company, in, a, in yeah. about as amicable a way as it's possible yeah. to do, it yeah, seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you re established yourself as an actress, which, once again, is quite fitting. I remember when I heard, and I didn't know you, I didn't know. But when I heard you a minute, I thought, that's not going to work, surely. And yet, you, you were in that Canterbury Towers, you were great in that, and then Doctor Who just blew away. I think any, any preconception people had about you, uh, maybe not being a good actress, it's like, you know, you are clearly one of the, the, the best young women performers in the country right now, and I'm not yeah. just saying that. Um, I've heard rumour about a Doctor Who movie. Yeah, I heard that as well. Okay. well it's all you've heard, a rumour? That's I'm all I've heard, that. a rumour. I haven't heard... So they haven't spoken to you about it? N no. I'm hoping they will. They will. And, well, I would if hope it so. Happens. Uh, and if they were to speak to you, you'd be keen to do that? I would definitely do it. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Wow. Well, I could be maybe a Dalek or something, innit? I thought you were going to be a Cyberman. So did I. What happened? And they didn't call me, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I think someone said to me he was too big for the suit. How? <laughs> How very dare you! Too big for those Cybermen sorts, and some of them were fat, I could see, and why did they, why were the Cybermen gay now? They made them sort of gay looking with flared trousers. No, they're not. No? No. Oh, they're just... strong like ox. <laughs> strong like ox? <laughs> yeah. That's a strange expression. Oh, I know. All right, okay, before you go, I just want to show one thing, because uh, obviously the Doctor Who toys, I love all the Doctor Toys, there's the K9. Here's the one of you, this was the rose one that came out, okay? Now, did you see... I don't know where she's got roots. Can you see that? They've given her roots, right? And they've made and they made you look a little bit like, and no disrespect to either you or I know. Like, a, like a grumpy lesbian. I know. <laughs> you look a bit like the badger from The Apprentice, don't you? <laughs> Uh, Billy, how yes. lovely to have you. Thank you so Thank much for coming on. I very much enjoyed meeting you properly this evening and spending some time in your company. I'm sure everyone here did as well. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Piper. Thank you. 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 All right.